Hi, you are watching Women Are Talking. This is a very special interview that we have here today, uh, honoring filmmaker, independent filmmakers in the Brooklyn community. And this is a, um, a film that you do want to go check out. Again, my, na my name is Billy Martin. We have host Mignon Polk. Hello. Coming from the Big Down. Um, and we have a special guest, Marcus Henderson. He's a cat filmmaker from the film King. Yep. So tell us what, who and what King is. Well, King, uh, first and foremost, is an urban crime thriller, and it's about, um, you know, a, a bi-curious uh, gun runner who comes home from prison who's seeking revenge on the person that betrayed him and sent him there. So that's pretty much the story. Mm. Mm. Interesting. She did some search. <laughs> she Googled you. I Googled you. I went on your Facebook because all that information is there. Very intriguing. I do like the plot. It's unique. The concept of him being bi curious. Is it being bi curious because you want to still lend a hand to his possibility of being with a woman? Or are you just kind of building it up for him to figure out where he wants to be in his sexuality? So that's just it. Um, without trying to give away too much. Um, give it away, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of, of him being very curious is really not uh, a central plot. Okay. It's just the fact okay. of the film, and it's kind of played out that way. The central plot is the mystery or the, right. the crime thriller. Not that, his sexuality. Not a sexuality. Right. It's just a, like, a prop. That's a fact. Right. It's a fact. That we see. That's, that you see. So how did you get a part of, um, be a, become a part of this project? Well, I wrote it. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> there that you go. worked. <laughs> I penned it. it. You know? I'm a director. Okay. So how did you get it um, filmed and picked up and produced? Well, well actually, we are beginning um, the fundraising aspect of it um, coming up on the Christmas holiday season. And... Um, I don't know, it's just one of those things that started snowballing, you know, I, I told the idea to one person, to another person, um, to another person, and um, people just started joining the project left and right. You didn't tell me. I was like, I, I ain't get that you. phone call. I haven't seen I'm, you. I'll be on campus. I haven't seen you. I, I mean, I'm incognito, but. I ain't like... get the tweet, the text. <laughs> You could send it by pigeon, you know. So no, but when I see you on the um, on the fan page, like you have, like you have a full production, yeah. you know, going on with the film. Yeah. So this is just by word of mouth, just connecting, connecting, it's, connecting. Yeah. It's and this is where it's going. Yeah, yeah, because I spoke with one of your producers, Emily. Hi. But um, uh, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight. But she was sharing a lot, and I also wanted her to become to be a part of the show mm -hmm. because I found it interesting that she would you know, want to be, yeah. <laughs> that she even uh, what found this project attractive, you know, in a way for her to say, let me fund, mm -hmm. well, well, <laughs> let me produce. I do notice that because you do have on the Facebook page, and the Facebook page is? King, King the Movie. Biden. Yeah. Okay. Y'all hear that? King the Movie. You have an interesting group of team players. Yeah. From um, Brandy, I yeah. think, and yeah, you said uh, Emily. It's a very interesting, very mixed. You have a Different, diverse. diverse. Mm -hmm. How did that really? Well, that's the whole point of <laughs> yeah. <that's> the <laughs> because that's point. what made me a try. Like, what Mark is doing? Let me... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's kind of the whole point of King was, you know, to um, showcase or to raise awareness and diversity, well, sexual diversity mm -hmm. or diversity of masculinity in the urban mm -hmm. community, and 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 you know, when you just start using that word, you know, it attracts diverse people mm -hmm. and people. Um, want to see something different on the screen so and true. that 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 fuels me you know Pre I'm yes. happy Pre as a filmmaker <laughs> yes so i you know i'm just gonna keep going as long as people want to see something different i'm gonna give it to them yeah you know it's a great story it's a great script and it's got really unique characters and it's just something that i think that you know it's been done but it's also something we need to see more of but from your perspective, I don't think it really has been done or it's been done in this way. From what I'm getting from the information in regards to the movie, you're, it's not in depth on one thing. It's kind of like 
watching a TV series just unfold. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing it yeah. on screen or on my iPod, on my touch or something. Hopefully it'll be in theaters, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, hopefully it'll be in film festivals and, yeah, I definitely see it and you winning awards and actually speaking of that, you have one that was in the Excuse was it Red Hook Red film? Red Hook. <laughs> Which one was that? What project that was that? That was Mira. Okay. Um, that's a film about a uh, sexually traumatized uh, woman who has gone through some sexual trauma and you know and she's being healed in mm. her current relationship. Just so you know real quick, audio's asking you to speak up. Oh, Just okay. So all right, all right. <laughs> Just so you know. Oh, we put it all out there, women on talk. We don't need to be all doing codes behind the camera. You know, look. Okay, I'll raise, raise the volume. I'll raise the volume. Turn it up, turn you it up. Know, we don't okay. need to be doing all sign languages and everything. <laughs> 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 But as you were saying, back to the film festival. So yeah, uh, Mira is a film. It's about you know, um, you know, it's about sexual trauma. It's mm -hmm. about um, a woman who has been sexually victimized and who is recovering and healing from that through love. Okay. So, so basically, amen. a lot of your movies seem to touch base on sexuality because even your documentary, Hip Hop um, and Homophobia. Yes. Sexuality is that just what? That's just your thing. That's his target audience. <laughs> well, uh, you know, he, that's his target audience. <laughs> I mean, I understand them. you came from being a video. I mean, you've done videos, so I understand yeah. videos get sold or albums get sold by sex. So you're just going on with that concept, or is something? Well, no, I don't see it like that. No, it's I really about it's really about me. You know, when I was, uh -uh. yeah, <laughs> mm, mm, I see, it. I, I, I see it as it's just your choice of genre. Well, no, it's not a choice. Well, yeah, it is a choice, but it's also, you know, I write about what I know. Right. And so you know a lot about sex. I know a lot about mm. sex. Are y'all hearing me? Say Okay. And, you know, just, you know, going off my own history and my, my own experiences, you know, coming up in, you know, the urban community, African-American urban community, we didn't really talk about sex a lot. Right. You know, you, you were pretty much conditioned by what you saw. Right. So um, for me, I kind of um, um, I had to look at the choices that I was making in relationships and how the conditioning in my community and how we you know, conditioned to behave mm -hmm. and sexuality and masculinity and how that impacted my relationships. Okay. And I wanted to know if, you know, if there was more diversity, how would that have impacted my relationships? Would I have chose differently? Mm -hmm. Would I have acted differently? Would the relationships have turned out differently? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like... Where you put your characters. Yeah, that's exactly where I put my characters. Gotcha. I do that as well. definitely like yeah. in the here and now because, you know, in children that were born in the 80s and the 90s, their perception of sexuality is much different, but yet still on the same level, or at least on the same <coughs> playing field as it is for those who were born in the 70s, somewhat of the 60s, but they were a little bit more freer yes. than what we perceive now because we have all these little restrictions. And then AIDS came around mm -hmm. and changed the way a lot of people thought and a lot of people even talked about it mm -hmm. in a lot of communities. So I do appreciate the fact that you're willing to step out of that box yeah, and you're definitely outside take of the it somewhere box else. Well, yeah, I, filmmaking. I was just, and I, I was actually... I thought it was just me. I'm glad I'm not lonely in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I was actually telling someone earlier, you know, what happened, well, like, I actually saw someone gay bash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear about it all the time, but it's a different thing when you actually see it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and so for me, I kind of felt, you know, moved to like start talking about the situation as well as, you know, and around, the, it was around the same time when uh, the Rutgers mm -hmm. or... Or the suicide. The suicide, suicide yeah. the Suicides and people were jumping off bridges and yeah. taking their own lives behind, you know, 
what other people perceive. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, okay, I think it's time for us to start seeing a little differently, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's all about how the individual perceives how everyone else sees them right. in terms of their sexuality. Nobody really cares. Right. At the end of the day, right. most people are too interested and worried about who they sleeping with to be worried about who you They worried about with. what shoes you wear. <laughs> they ain't really worried about nothing else. Like, oh. Especially so, with not paying their bills. Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of the idea behind the whole situation is to raise awareness that, you know, there are sexual differences. Everybody got something different right. that they like. And, right. you know, we need to just get over it. Being that you know, all your movies are based on, well, they're based, they have sexual undertones. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is the male perspective. When you doing the lesbian one? Because I personally would like to give you well, some input on that. Well, come see Kit. Oh, Lord. Come see Kit. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> what? What? I'm saying I, I, I have the West Indian. I have the, you know, coming out in the different, child please, I can write a book on stuff I know. That's but, like, she's a walking HBO series. I, <laughs> I, I mean, just don't, when, in touching on the fact of watching Gay Bash, I think the first time I ever witnessed that was due to the fact that Wendy Williams was talking about where all the gay men, because she's a man. Um, <laughs> Stop it. Hi, Stop Wendell. it. Um, <laughs> Wendell, stop um, it! No, she's not. <laughs> stop it. She talked about how you know this is where all the trannies hang out, and she gave like specific locations. And for a particular summer, it was dangerous to be a gay man, dangerous to be a crossdresser. It was gay, just dangerous. Period. On certain parts where we always felt safe in Christopher Street, because she was promoting this, and she didn't realize she was promoting the gay bashing. But then she, on her defense, oh, da, 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 da. drag queen. Stop it. Wait, she didn't, what was her defense? Her defense was basically, I was just telling people stuff. Okay. And it was like, okay, you're telling people stuff, but then when the issue arose, and well, Rose is saying, well, you announced it. Speak on it, either speak against it, or just say something about it. And she just kind of like swept down in the rug. Okay. But then. I understand your argument now. You understand? So yeah. it's. I enjoy seeing movies. I enjoy the fact that people are now talking about it and it's not just being swept under the rug like it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, where, oh, you're gay. Oh, that's my aunt. She's single. She will always be single. She, yeah. No. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give it, give it something. Give it a voice, especially for the children, because a lot of them don't have. So, I, I'll talk to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No. You know that's not how I really feel. <laughs> I'm just doing that for her. <laughs> anyway, so no, it is a great film, and I'm looking forward to the final product. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the screening and the rap party and yeah. all that stuff. I will be invited to. So <laughs> you know, we got to interview him when it comes in. Yes, we have to interview you, you on on location. Back. In fact, yes, on location. Yes, yeah, let him yes. know. You know, on location. But I unfortunately, have to end the show. Okay. Um, thank you so much for being a part of it. You thank know. You. And, and, and giving this opportunity to talk about a great independent filmmaker named Marcus Henderson coming out with a film called King. <laughs> coming to a theater near you <laughs> very, very soon. And I thank you again for watching. We're on Facebook. Follow us. We're on Twitter. Follow us. And good night, New York. Good night, New York.
couple of moves here or there. <laughs> 